praise the Lord. May the name of our Lord be praised. Today I'm going to share with you a message taken from Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 6, and we're going to read two verses, verse 23rd and verse 24. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. Today I'm going to talk about peace and especially finding inner peace. You know, we know our outer world influence our inner world. And our inner world reacts because of our outer world. Inner peace is most important for our lives. Inner peace is most important matter in our lives. And according to Judges chapter 6, here we see a wonderful story about Gideon. Gideon was afraid because of the enemies. And Bible declares, when Israelites' harvest was ready, prepared, fully prepared, the enemy would come and they destroy everything and they rob everything. Because of that, all the Israelites were oppressed, discouraged, disappointed, and among them was a man of God, Gideon. Gideon was also afraid because of enemies. Because they used to come. When they see the harvest is ready, it's fully prepared, they come, they rob everything. So Gideon was afraid. He had fear in his spirit. He was disturbed in his inner inner spirit, or I can say inner peace, was stolen. And God spoke to Gideon. And these are the two verses where we see God impart. God imparted his peace, his own peace, into Gideon's spirit. And Lord said, Peace! Do not be afraid, Gideon. You are not going to die. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord and there and called it the Lord is peace. Amen. How did he receive the peace of God? Because of God. You know, sometimes we also have the same situation in our lives. Because of our challenges, because of our circumstances, because of our troubles, because of our worries, we get so much distracted. Sometimes we are disappointed. We are perplexed, disturbed. You know, the enemy tried to steal our peace. So we need to restore our peace today. Amen? So this message is going to help you how to restore our peace. That's most important. The feeling that we have in our, in our spirit will definitely influence other people. So if we have peace in us, we can impart or spread this peace to the world. If everybody is contributing, trying to bring a peace into this world, what they have to do? First, they need to get the peace in their heart first. We want peace in this world. We need to develop peace in our spirit first. And here, that's the place where the word Shalom is mentioned. We know Jehovah God is Shalom God. Shalom, Shalom means peace. So God introduced himself, I am your peace. Amen. He didn't say, I'll give you peace. You will remain in peace. I will impart peace. He said, I am in peace. 
Amen. So in today's message, we're going to learn how to develop peace in our spirit. How to be peaceful in our life. Peace is so important in our lives. If you are at a point in your life where fear is gripping you, and you need to be still and look for the peace of God. And God's body says, I am peace. Thank you. We all face challenges and troubles in our lives. So we need peace in our lives. One of the best words that I can want, that I want to share with you today is Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30 and say, Heart, a heart at peace gives life to the body. You know, this is the medicine. Here, the word of God says, the wisest person, King Solomon says, a heart at peace gives life to the body. Amen. What a joy. Sometimes we have mental problems. Sometimes we have psychological problems. Sometimes we have physical problems. Oh, sometimes we have so many problems in our body, right? So how to restore our body? Yeah, there is a medicine available in the market. Yeah, the doctors are uh, here to, around us to help us. Lots of specialties, right? The heart surgeon, cardiologists, orthopedics, and lots of doctors and surgeons are available to help us. Yes, but one of the best ways the Bible declares is we have peace in our heart. This peace reflects, influence our entire body. I always say, if you need healing, you first need to have peace of God in your life. Once you have peace, your body will automatically be healed. And we need to fill our hearts with God's word. And we will automatically be filled with the peace of God. The Bible tells us in no uncertain terms that a heart at peace has a profound effect on the physical health and well-being of the body. The Bible declares it gives life to the body. The next one, please. So now, how to get back our peace? If our peace is stolen because of worry, this worries, because of stress, because of illness, because of people, because of uh, our you know environment around us how to get back our peace number one fix your mind on him him is christ mind right so we have to fix our mind philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7 bible declares verse 6 says do not be anxious about anything but in everything Every, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So here we see a few things mentioned here how to develop, how to restore, how to get back our peace. Bible declared Paul gives us a principle. And the principle is prayer and petition. Prayer and petition along with thanksgiving. That's the formula. That's the way to get back our peace. So where should we fix our mind? Sometimes we fix our minds on our needs. We want this, we want that. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. But Bible declares what we should do. We have to fix our mind in Christ Jesus. So Bible declares that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So who's the source of peace? Christ Jesus. How to reach to Christ Jesus? Prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. Three things. If we follow this trinity, if we follow this principle and always <coughs> connect our prayers with thanksgiving and petition all together and present before God 
and then Bible declared God makes promises to all of us that in Christ Jesus we can have peace. So that's the way we have to turn our minds, our hearts to, to the prayer and petition and we can find the peace of God. We need to make Him regularly our focus, in our focus. Our focus should be on prayer, petitions and thanksgiving. So that's the best way to recover. That's the best way to get back all our peace that's been stolen by our enemies. One of the, one of the, uh, what do you call, uh, the weapon that enemy uses against us is stealing peace. He knows that once the peace is stolen, the, para, the person will become paralyzed. He'll be paralyzed. He can't do anything. Like a person who's paralyzed, he cannot move properly. In the same way, when believer, believer's peace is stolen, he is like a paralyzed person. So what we have to do, fix our eyes on Jesus, in Jesus, on God, and through prayer, through petition, and through thanksgiving. We must thank God for everything. Oh Lord, thank you for my health. Lord, thank you for my for my life. Lord, thank you for my resources. Lord, thank you for my job. Lord, thank you for my Lord, thank you for my church. Lord, thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed on my life. Number two, trust in Him. John chapter 16 and verse 33 says. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Why the Lord said, I have overcome the world? It means I have defeated the enemies. I have overcome the enemies. So that's why the Lord gives us the assurance that the trouble will not triumph over us. Since Jesus himself has overcome the world, therefore we may take heart and rest in his peace in the very midst of our troubles and trials. Strides. So we have to trust in him in all the ways. Not only one way, not two ways, but in all the ways we must trust God. Fully trust. Amen. Yeah, number three, last one. This is so important because the Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5 declares, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Okay, so number 3 is devote yourself self to serve others. When we devote ourselves and when we just begin to serve <coughs> others, the peace of God comes into our state. The peace of God comes into our lives. You know, many people cannot sleep, sleep well because of insomnia, anxiety, depression. A lot of things are happening in our lives. And so how to overcome? This is the easiest way to begin to serve others. Amen. So let's begin to serve. Let's always try to serve other people. So if we lift up our focus from ourselves and engage to serve others, God's peace will prevail in our hearts and in our minds. So serving others is the best way, is the best medicine for our hearts. We don't need to spend time on medications. We need to spend on serving others. The moment we decide to serve others, the peace of God will prevail in our hearts. So, the small seeds, Peter Marshall says, the small deeds done are better than the great deeds planned. Sometimes we just plan, but we don't do anything. So in the same way, Peter Marshall says, small deeds, the small acts are better than great deeds. Sometimes we just make big plans, but we do not execute those plans. So we need to take small steps to some others. 
We need to take small, we need to do small things for others. Let's begin to do small things for others. So these are the three ways. Number one, I said, let's fix our eyes on Jesus Christ and we'll have peace. And how to do this? Through prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. Number two, I said, we need to fix our, we need to trust in Jesus Christ. And I, want, I just want to remind you, Jesus was in the boat and there was a flood and heavy, you know, waves. And the boat was shaken. And at that time, the Lord spoke to his disciples and he said, Where is your peace? Why are you so, so helpless, so confused, so disturbed? Don't you know I am in your boat? Amen. The presence of God gives us peace. So in the same way, once we need to trust God more and more every day in all our circumstances. And the third one, we need to begin to serve others. Now, let me conclude here. No matter what is stealing your peace and peace today, you can get it back by praying, proclaiming truth, and praising the Lord. Let, uh, let go of the things you can't control, the people you can't change, and the situations that stress, it, stress you out. Allow Jesus to restore your peace, renew your mind, and refresh your spirit. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus Christ and let, it, let us thank God in all our circumstances. Amen. So my conclusion is, let us thank God in all the circumstances. Amen. Our God is aware of our problems. He knows each and everything about our past, about our present, and even the future. So everything is in control. God is in control. And He's our Lord. And He spoke to Gideon, I am your peace. So Lord is speaking to you today. I am your peace. I know your situation. I know your challenge. I know your problems. I know your troubles. I know. But remember, I am your peace. Today God is saying, He is your peace. Amen. So let us thank God for all His mercy, all His grace upon our life. And He is our peace. God is our shalom God. He spoke to Gideon. Gideon, I am your peace. So today we need peace. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. He is our eternal peace. He said, I will never leave you. 